gregarious, friendly person uh, and caused her life to be tangled in such a weave web, uh, such a situation that you, um, yours have spun into. Uh, and it's so unfortunate because you had such a lovely family uh, of such friendly people, and, including you. And, and to go from that to this. Um, you know, your license to practice law has been stripped away from you. You turn from lawyer to witness. And, and now have an opportunity to make your final appeal uh, and it's almost uh, it's really surprising that you're waiving this right at this time and if you opt to do so it's on you I, you're not compelled to say anything but you have the opportunity to do so And I tell you again, I respect this court, but I'm innocent. I would never, under any circumstances, hurt my wife, Maggie, and I would never, under any circumstances, hurt my son, Paul Paul. Well, and it might not have been you. It might have been uh, the monster you become when you take 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 opioid pills, maybe you become another person. Um, I, I've seen that before. The, you know, the, the person standing before me was not the person who committed the crime, though it's the same individual. Um, we'll leave that at that. Before announcing sentence on these cases, with regard to all of the other pending cases, are any of them here in Colleton, or I'm sure some of them are? Yes, sir. Half of them, or? I, I don't have that in front of me, but there are a substantial number of charges here. There's some in Hampton, Archford, Beaufort, uh, Allendale. Um, there may be others that I'm not thinking of right now. We might have worn out our welcome here in Colleton. Um, they have been, and I'll take this opportunity to thank Sheriff Hill and um, all of the court officials and, and really everyone I've met and, and dealt with while here in Colleton County. Just been great. But without any delay, we're going to schedule some of the other matters. I know Mr. Harputlian's scheduling is complicated and you've sacrificed quite a bit to be able to hear, be here um, defending uh, Mr. Murdoch as well as the Attorney General's office um, with all the other many, many things and obligations you have and to be able to have the Attorney General here, um, Alan Wilson, for the period of time that he's uh, devoted to being here along with everyone else it's 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 been uh, uh, quite a sacrifice uh, but there are other victims whose cases deserve to be heard and this case has jumped some of those other cases um, perhaps jumped it because of the If this case resulting in an, an assault on the integrity of the judicial system in our state. Even during this trial, the law enforcement have been maligned for the past five or six weeks by one who had access to uh, 
to the wheels of justice to be able to deflect the investigation and as the evidence is pointed out in this case the looming storm that Mr. Waters talked about I can just imagine on that day June 7 when a lawyer is confronted and confesses to having stolen over a half a million dollars from a client and he has a tiger like Mark Tinsley on his tail pursuing discovery in the case involving the death of Mallory Beach and having a father for the most part on his deathbed. I could imagine, or really can't imagine, <laughs> uh, but I know it had to have been quite a bit uh, going through your mind on that day. But amazingly, to have you come and testify that it was just another ordinary day that my wife and son and I were out just enjoying life. Not credible, not believable. You can convince yourself about it, but obviously you have the inability to convince anyone else about that. So if you made any such arguments as a lawyer, you would lose every case of that, like that cases you will never have an opportunity to argue anymore except perhaps your own as you um, sit in the Department of Corrections. Anything further? No, sir. All right, Mr. Murdoch, I sentence you to the State Department of Corrections on each of the murder indictments in the murder of your wife, Maggie Murdoch, I sentence you for the term of the rest of your natural life for the murder of Paul Murdoch, whom you probably love so much. I sentence you to prison for murdering him for the rest of your natural life those sentences will run consecutive under the statute involving possession of a weapon during a violent crime there is no sentence where life a life sentence is imposed on other indictments that is the sentence of the court and you are remanded to the state department of corrections And officers may carry forth on the imposition. Oh, the tangled web we weave. Those were the words we heard from the judge reiterating the words that Alec Murdoch had stated from the witness yes. stand. You've been watching ABC News special coverage of the sentencing of Alex Murdaugh, life in prison for the killing of his wife and son, in a case that's been followed very closely now for the better part of a month. We begin the news uh, at uh, 9, 9.07 right now. Good morning to you. It is Friday. It is March 3rd. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll have more on that trial and the verdict and the punishment on web and also on, you know, on the air later newscast. But for now, let's look out there with live cam. It looks, I was going to say, it looks a little better than it did this morning, but it was a super windy overnight. Super windy. And I, I want to point out the screen here on live cam. You can see kind of what looks like a little bit of mud residue. But we had dust in the atmosphere yesterday. All those winds kicked up, uh, brought in some dust from the west. Then you got the rain and you got a little bit of mud, so your car may not look so nice if it was parked outside last night. 
Uh, we also had the hail. It was, it was just a busy night in general. Here's the good news, though. We're heading into a great weekend. The winds are starting to calm down. We're going to see blue skies and some beautiful temperatures. So let's look at the winds right now. Right now, gusting 25 in Pleasanton, gusting at 25 in the Braunfels, gusting at 26 in Gonzales. So there still are some gusts out there, but around San Antonio, the winds have really calmed quite a bit. And uh, we're not seeing any big time gusts at this hour. The peak wind gust yesterday, though, wow, some big numbers. 72 mile per hour wind gusts recorded out in Del Rio. We had a 58 mile per hour wind gust here in San Antonio, gusted to 63 in Hondo. So that's the kind of wind that can do a little bit of damage. We uh, did note some trees that came down. Uh, of course, uh, the hail, as I mentioned earlier, we had some of that here in San Antonio. Right now, temperature is 59 at the airport, 55 hello, 54 comfort. 53 out in Las Maples. It's a cool, crisp morning, and temperatures will eventually make their way uh, into the upper 70s this afternoon. What a great day. 77 sunny, northerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then tonight, I'll caution you, those temperatures will fall off quickly. So if you have evening plans, take the coat with you because by sunset, those numbers will tumble into the 60s and eventually uh, 50s and 40s by tomorrow morning. More on that weekend forecast. We also look back at some of the pictures that we uh, got yesterday. That's coming up in just a bit. Let's go over to Stephen now. Hopefully the Friday morning commute is looking good. You know, Justin, I felt a little bad this morning because my car was pretty messy, but then I came into the station and I felt I wasn't alone. Everyone needs to wash their car, but let's get a quick look around town because it's still a mess out there in terms of what we are seeing on the roads. 90 there at 35. We did actually have a pretty big crash that just cleared a few moments ago. Now this is in the eastbound lanes as you approach Nogalito. So obviously a very busy spot as commuters are still making their way into the Alamo City from Castroville. So take a look there. US 90 East Eastbound as you approach 35, well, you're still going to see a little bit of a delay there, and that could just be residual traffic. But I did see one of the first responders uh, ambulance leave the scene, so I'm hoping everyone is doing OK. Uh, but it looks like traffic may be improving pretty quickly. Let's take a jump over here. Uh, we did have a crash that cleared also from 37 northbound at Pecan Valley Drive. It really wasn't causing major issues on the roadway, but something that we were we had to keep on our radar for a little while. Now I got to take a jump over here to 410 westbound at Fredericksburg Road. Another crash also reported also causing a little bit of a delay for drivers. So obviously getting a wide look at the map uh, morning commute has already dwindled down and green has taken over our map once again. But unfortunately, we still have a few issues that are lingering. Now 90 at 35 was that crash that was taking up a little bit of room on the roadways. But again, that is cleared out. I'll watch 410 closely, but uh, my guess is it should clear because it's not listed as a major crash. Mark Seth. Thank you, Stephen. A woman is facing a robbery charge this morning after an incident at a beauty store on the city's southeast side. 22 year old Elise Jones accused of taking items from Ella Beauty on Southeast Military Drive near I-37. According to arrest records, she was able to get away while two other people caused a disturbance in the store. When an employee followed her to the parking lot, Jones is accused of pepper spraying her in the face. And we have now learned a woman died following a house fire on the city's far west side early this morning. That's according to the San Antonio Fire Department. The fire was called in just before 10, 2 a.m. at a home in the 8900 block of Mansfield Street, not far from Highway 151 and Petranco Road. Firefighters tell us that when they got there, they found heavy smoke coming from the back of the house. When crews got inside, they found it was packed to the brim full of belongings. So fire officials say the blaze burned for a while because of the difficulty getting water to the home. An ex-boyfriend turned stalker bonds out, then gets arrested again for trying to break into the original victim's home. Now the DA's office says Simon Villa is on the run after cutting off his ankle monitor. A warrant for his arrest has been issued. His victim says she was assaulted and stalked in 2020. She tells us he bonded out the first time at the end of last year. Then last week, Villa was back at her house trying to break in. Martinez shot at him in self-defense, but didn't hit him. SAPD was able to arrest him on charges of felon with a firearm and attempted burglary. He was given bond again and is now on the run. I haven't seen this guy in years, so and he's running up on me with a hoodie. I've, I've had no issues and he gets released from prison and I start, I feel like I have to change my whole life around for this individual because he, nobody can keep him behind bars. According to the DA's office, they recommended VS bonds be set at $50,000 per charge. The judge decided on $50,000 total. Instead, the DA says if he is caught, there's a good chance he won't be given a bond next time around.
time now, 9:12 and 59 degrees for now. They're still ahead on GMSA at 9. It's that time of year to start your spring cleaning. Later, we'll show you what heavily discounted products you're going to want to buy for help around the house. And Somerset ISD is serving up life skills to some local junior high school students. We're going to tell you what they're preparing for next. Welcome back. It's 916. A program at Somerset ISD is teaching students different skills for real world job opportunities. Tiffany Huertas takes us to the Bulldog Cafe with a look at what these students are learning and cooking. From coffee to pastries, these Somerset ISD students are busy preparing something special at the Bulldog Cafe. I do tacos and I make the salsa. Eighth grade student Adrina Valdez is part of the life skills class at Somerset Junior High School. I cook at school and that it's fun to do. Well, every Friday uh, we would normally set up for teachers. Again, so we sell coffee, tacos, uh, pastries, um, any kind of breakfast thing that we might think of, the kids research everything, they they put it all together. This program started last year. Uh, it's the lifelong lessons they can use and, and take with them no matter where they go, whether it's in a job or it's at home or, you know, college or whatever. Today, students are delivering coffee to Savannah Heights Intermediate School. It teaches them customer service, puts a smile on their face, has them interact with other individuals. For Audrina, she wants to continue learning and wants to work in the restaurant industry. I like to cook and I like to bake. The next phase of this program is to partner with local businesses to provide job opportunities for the students. Reporting from Somerset ISD, Tiffany Huertas, Bates at 12 News. And happy birthday to our Tiffany Huertas. Yes, happy birthday. birthday. Uh, yeah. yeah, I saw some of the pictures. Hey, it's, yeah. it, uh, we got a lot of pictures coming in on KSAC Connect from last night. It was busy. Uh, you saw that you guys were in the video from the Alamo Dome. Just yes. got some wild stuff going mm -hmm. on with the hail. It, 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 there was a lot of it. And I would tell you, if you did get some sizable hail, maybe around quarter size, make sure you keep the pictures. Take down the date just in case you had any damage. Yeah. That hail's marginal. Sometimes it can do a little bit. Hopefully, we don't have too much around the city. Let me show you a picture. Uh, this is coming in from Lacoste, Tree Down. We had a few of these. Those winds were so strong that uh, that's not a surprise. We had some of those gusts up around 60 miles per hour. And then this is a picture of a car here with uh, the mud on it. This is not the only car, trust me. Uh, we had the dust that got kicked up. We had a big dust plume come in from Del Rio when those winds kicked up there, and then you had the rain in, and this is the end result. Not pretty, car washes will be busy today. And uh, as we look at the storm reports, uh, there were quite a few of them kind of clustered right here around San Antonio. So you have the, the wind damage, the high wind reports, and thankfully no tornado reports around here. Uh, now, as you go to the north and east, it was a different story. There were some tornadoes, and I'll show you those here in just a second. But look at all the reports from San Antonio to Dallas up to parts of Oklahoma. 125 reports total when we're talking severe weather here. Thankfully, no injuries. There was a lot of tree and power line damage. And as I said, there were six tornado reports in far northeast Texas. So Sulphur Springs over to Texarkana down to Shreveport. There were some tornadoes that touched down. Uh, likely some damage there in the northeastern parts of Texas. The severe threat today moves east. Lexington, Knoxville, Chattanooga, those are areas that will likely see a round of severe weather this afternoon. But this is all well east of us. This storm system is quickly racing to the north and east. You see the spin right there. Tornado watch box already in place for places like Nashville and down towards Tupelo, Mississippi. And that's where all the action will be. And notice there's a little bit of snow on the north side of that too. So busy day for the eastern half of the country, not for us. We've got blue skies and it will be so very nice. 59 degrees right now, 58 in New Braunfels, 56 in Kerrville, 59 in Uvalde, 66 in Carrizo Springs. So we're getting off to a cool start. Temperatures We'll begin to climb here pretty soon. They already are. 56 in Hull, it is 58 Rio Medina, and we'll see those numbers jump up pretty quickly. Dry air, uh, we typically see those big swings and temperature from a cool morning to a, a pretty warm afternoon. Uh, the winds finally dying down some. We had howling winds all night long, and now we're seeing these winds gust to maybe 2025, and this will last a little while longer, but I think by lunchtime, the winds really start to lay down and relax and you'll see just uh, five to 10 mile per hour winds. And we see that here with the wind gust forecast. So 
3 p.m. through 6 p.m. you're seeing the winds really calm. And that's another factor to why we'll see some chilly temperatures going into your Saturday morning. Light winds, dry air, good combina combination for some radiational cooling. As we look across the state, it's 39 in Amarillo right now. 44 Wichita Falls, 49 Dallas, 64 Corpus Christi, 68 in Brownsville. So still a little warmer down across uh, deep south Texas. But everybody will see a good warm up today. As far as humidity, it's gone for a couple of days. It's not until Sunday that it tries to come back a little bit more. You probably still won't even feel it on Sunday. We could see a little bit of patchy fog, uh, but it's not until Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday that you really do start to feel the humidity again. And that could lead, it could lead to a few showers, maybe as we get into uh, late next week. Uh, but uh, 77 today, 81 tomorrow, 82 on your Sunday. Great weekend. And then next week, warm and humid. We're watching for a front late next week. Still some questions on when it gets here, but it does look like it could pack a punch. Right now we're forecasting 60 for Thursday. We'll see if it gets that cool behind that front. It'd be a nice break after all the 80s next week. It would be, and March is still one of those months where we kind of go on that roller coaster ride. It can be really warm, and then we can get a pretty good looking cold front. It will be interesting. Thank yep. you, Justin. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. Right now, 922, 60 degrees on your Friday morning. Coming up next, spring cleaning is near. We're going to tell you which products you can buy to help with your cleaning that will help you save some money as well. 925, you can already feel it. Spring's in the air, and that means spring cleaning, yard work, and of course, allergies. Yes, 12 on your sides. And Marilyn Morris shows us what products are discounted this month to help you tackle it all. Spring blooms are just around the corner, and so are sales. Think spring cleanup and spruce up. March is the first month of the year without any major shopping holidays, but there are still opportunities to save on something you might need right now. Our research has shown that air purifiers and vacuums tend to be especially affordable this month. Consumer Reports tracks the prices of its top tested products and found these on sale right now. The Samsung JetBot AI is now $679 at Amazon. That's nearly half price. This little robot cleaned up in tests on carpet, bare floors, pet hair, even the corners. Spring allergies and dreaded oak pollen are coming. This Blue Air Protect Air Purifier is $381 at Best Buy, also half price. In tests, this one got excellent marks for removing dust, smoke, and pollen. And it's about time to bust out the lawn tools. This DeWalt string trimmer is trimmed by about 25 bucks at Amazon. It's now $195. You likely won't need a space heater for a while, but you can save now for later on this Vornado. It's the best overall in Consumer Reports tests. It is now $160 at Amazon. And if your home's windows have seen better days, March can be a great time to invest in shiny new energy efficient replacements. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Happy spring, y'all. 926, 60 degrees. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9. Still ahead of behind the scenes look into an intense part of boot camp military training, why it's important for recruits to have confidence in their gear. Let's look out there with live cam. It's looking kind of pretty after all that crazy wind we had overnight and last night into this morning. Yeah, the skies are remarkably blue considering those winds kicked up uh, a lot of dust as we talked about it earlier. So it is, is turning into a beautiful day. Temperatures are already starting to jump up pretty quickly. I uh, want to show you another picture that we got uh, coming in from the damage last night. Now, this is interesting. Uh, this is the aftermath of the high winds yesterday. Uh, they found their neighbor's trampoline stuck in the alleyway. It's wedged between the fences. Uh, those trampolines are notorious for getting picked up by the wind, but that is a sort of a precarious spot for the <laughs> to land. Uh, interesting. Thank you so much for sending in that picture, Cindy. We appreciate it. And as always, we'll try to share as many pictures as you can uh, send in. Uh, those winds, speaking of those gusty winds, they have died down some. We're still getting some breezy conditions, but nothing, nothing like last night. Gust to 25 in New Braunfels, gusting to 28 in Gonzales right now, still gusting to 29 in Pleasanton. But here in the city, we've lost most of those wind gusts. Still think we could see some 20 to 25 next couple of hours. But by lunchtime, the winds will have pretty much gone away. 70 by lunchtime. What a gorgeous day. 77 the high, sunny skies. Northerly winds will be light tonight. I will tell you, though, uh, if you have plans to be out and about tonight, it is going to be chilly. Once the, the sun goes down, those temperatures will fall off quickly. We'll be in the low 60s by 9 o'clock, but 50s by 10 p.m. and eventually 40s by tomorrow morning. Much more on the weekend forecast and a look ahead to next week with another rain chance.
coming up in just a couple minutes, guys. Uh, Justin, thank you very much. I'm asking the Eagle Eyes in the booth to help us out here. We've got an accident working westbound 90, westbound Highway 90 at General Hudnell. There's 90 at 35. I don't see it there, but minor accidents working uh, right now. 90 at General Hudnell, two main lanes blocked, one shoulder blocked right now. But again, the good news is it's only a minor incident. We also have a stalled vehicle at 90 in Zarzamora. That would be on the westbound lanes of uh, Highway 90 itself. And thank you for scanning right now. We're not seeing it on any of these cameras. Maybe that's the stalled vehicle right there near that's, 90 and Nogalitos. That's possible. Yep. And if you served in the military, this is probably a part of your training that's hard to forget. Chemical, biological, and nuclear preparedness, a critical phase for men and women in uniform to complete while in boot camp. In the Air Force, trainees undergo this necessary evil during week four of training. Our Jonathan Cotto takes us behind the gates of Joint Base San Antonio's Chapman Annex for a look inside the tightly sealed walls of the gas chamber and why it's important for those recruits to have confidence in their gear. The gas chamber, a not so fun but necessary element in military training that's been in place for decades. The significance of it dates all the way back to World War I. Today, these trainees must successfully complete the Seaburn Defense Course. That's chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear preparedness. In here, trainees are exposed to a concentrated and controlled amount of tear gas. This building is much more sealed up, much more sound. It also has a built-in filtration system. So while we're in their training, the trainees get a better concentration that gives them a better experience and make sure that they can feel the proper effects of wearing that gas mask correctly. <laughs> and if worn incorrectly, trainees will feel the short-lived but painful irritation. Burns, it burns. <laughs> Once all of the gases hits you, it's like it's like a, a adrenaline rush just just hits you, and your eyes are burning and you're coughing. A proper seal on the mask crucial for maximum survivability in a real world scenario. This is one of the fundamentals of operating in that overseas environment. We never know what enemy forces could use. <laughs> and as unpleasant as it feels. This trainee says it's been an overall positive experience. Blink, breathe. I mean, it didn't feel too nice in the moment, but I think if I were ever deployed in any kind of hostile environment, I would absolutely be prepared and trained to do what I need to do to protect myself and help my wingmen if need be. Part of the reason why this training is so important is so that trainees can establish what they call mask confidence. They need to trust that their gear will work if they ever have to use it. We learned all about how to check everything, the insides and the outs, make sure everything's secure, done properly. So I am fully confident if I were to play tomorrow, I can do what I need to do to be safe. <laughs> <laughs> Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. From training days to game day, Mitch Johnson, the acting head coach for the Spurs, first home game in a month last night. Coach Pop out with a non-COVID illness. Top assistant Brett Brown was out as well. First quarter, Kata Bates Diop drives for the right-handed reverse layup and one. Somewhat tough shot there. Free show throw was good. Three point play. We're tied 11. Pacers actually led 54 52 at the halftime, though. Jump to the third. Jeremy Sohan down low, kicks it out to Devontae Graham for the triple. The Spurs lead 59 54. Moments later, Graham from three again, nails it, draws the foul, too. Free throw good. Four point play. Spurs lead 63 54. Graham feeling it, fires another triple. No good, but Sohan slams it back through. Offensive board and some jam time for a 10 point lead. Late in the quarter, Vassell drives and switches hands for a sweet layup, and the Spurs go up 11. Vassell had 10 of the Spurs' 31 third quarter points, and they led 83 70 after the three. Fourth frame, Graham was downtown, and the Silver and Black led by 18. Largest of the game, Spurs won their second straight game in their five game home slide. The final 110 to 99 over the Indiana Pacers. Jeremy Sohan had 22 points and 13 boards for his first career double-double. And Devin Vassell had 18 points in his return. Great to have him back as well. Up next, Spurs host the Rockets tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Women's college basketball, UTSA went on the road and beat the defending conference champs. Charlotte 49ers 80-59 to last night. Jordan Jenkins led UTSA with 25 points. Freshman Sydney Loves was next with 22 UTSA has won a season high four in a row heading into the Conference USA Championship Tournament next week.
The girls' high school basketball state tournament is underway at San Antonio's Alamo Dome. Wagner played Frisco Liberty in the UIL class for a state semifinals in a game that was stopped briefly due to some hail coming through the roof. It was in some interesting video. GMSA intern Kelly Marsh brings us the sights and sounds of the game and what's next for the Wagner Thunderbirds. A bit of a slow start for Wagner, but then they rallied, taking the lead early in the second quarter. But they had no answer and fell in their first semifinal game since 2015. I think they played the they played defense pretty good. They knew in order to like stop our movement and stuff, they had to face guard. They knew if I couldn't hit threes and if they stopped LA from driving the basket, it would stop our movement. There were. Um, sometimes that we did not box out. Uh, they're, they're, they were a big team. Um, sometimes uh, crucial times that we didn't box out. Um, but overall, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of these girls overall. It just didn't fall our way. I mean, we had several shots in the first half that went in and went out. Uh, but I mean, overall, I'm happy and proud of these kids. Wagner ended their season 28 and 5 overall. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Kelly Marsh. Special day at New Braunfels Canyon High School yesterday with six time Major League All Star and Canyon alum Lance Berkman at his number 23 jersey retired at the Canyon baseball field. Lance graduated from Canyon in 1994, went on to play 15 seasons in the bigs with the Strohs, Yankees, Cardinals, and Rangers. He says he was honored to have his number 23 jersey retired and had this advice for the Cougars baseball team. Enjoy this period of your life while you can. It goes by really quick. I mean, I think back to when I was here and just seems sometimes it seems like it was last week and sometimes it seems like forever ago. So it goes life goes by quick. Enjoy, you know, your experience playing high school baseball. The 2011 World Series champ Berkman threw out the first pitch before the Cougs hosted Dripping Springs. Lance is currently head baseball coach of the Houston, Houston rather Baptist Huskies. An amazing discovery in the Great Lakes brings closure to a shipwreck mystery buried at sea for more than a century. Here is CNN's Jeremy Roth with more. Deep below the surface of Michigan's icy Lake Huron, a 128-year-old shipwreck mystery has been solved. NOAA officials, in conjunction with the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary, say the remains of the long-lost Ironton shipwreck have been found in remarkably preserved condition. Researchers used cutting-edge technology to locate the 191-foot Ironton, which collided with another vessel in 1894, sinking both ships and leaving only two survivors behind. Officials say the lake's cold, fresh waters helped preserve the sunken ship, which is resting upright with all three masts still standing, and its lifeboat, which doomed crew members tried unsuccessfully to use, still tethered to the vessel's stern. A scary situation on a plane could be a cautionary tale for traveling with technology. Passengers say a battery pack charging a cell phone caught fire in an overhead bin, filling the cabin of a Spirit Airlines flight with smoke. The fire was put out and the plane made an emergency landing in Florida, where firefighters came on board to check everything out. Spirit Airlines later thanked the responders and the crew and passengers for their quick actions. Finally, stargazers may have thought they were seeing double recently, but that's only because Jupiter and Venus happen to be passing in the night sky. The event, called a conjunction, happens when one planet passes another as they orbit the sun, giving astronomy aficionados around the world a telescopic two-for-one. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. 940, 62 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. It's a look out there with Trans Guy looking at Highway 90 at Zarzamora, where things are moving a little slow. You can see there's like one lane blocked off there, at least one, maybe two. Accident westbound 90 at uh, General Hudnell area. Yes, that may have something to do with it, but it's moving slowly right now. We'll keep you updated. And after the break, in case you missed it, footage from last night's stormy weather. They got some hail inside the Alamo Dome. There it is falling right onto the court. All right, this morning crews are going to be looking at the roof of the Alamo Dome after some hail trickled through the ceiling last night during those severe storms. Happened during the 5A girls basketball state semifinal between Wagner and Frisco Liberty. We're told the action stopped early in the fourth quarter after the hail started coming in. They were able to continue after crews cleaned up the debris and dried the cord off. Uh, we heard earlier today that it may have come in through some exhaust or ventilation ducts on the ceiling. 
or rooftop of the dome itself. Sure, the wind did not help. Yeah, when you get wind-driven hail, funny mm -hmm. things can happen, yeah. and that would be my guess. I doubt there's holes in the roof or anything like that, right. but uh, still crazy to see something like that. Yeah. I'm sure it was a bit jarring for those inside. It almost looked like they spilled a cup of sonic ice on the court <laughs> there in some spots, right? <laughs> it's happening. Like, let me get this. Hold on real quick. Uh, yeah, interesting stuff. That, that was the, some wind-driven hell last night, some very gusty winds. Thankfully, the hail was was sizable, but not big enough to where it did a lot of damage. So that, that we're thankful for. Also, we got rain out of it, so there is that too. That's another positive thing. So let's look at rainfall. Where do we stand? Since March 1st, uh, obviously we picked up 0.16. That was last night. That's amazingly still a little bit below average. Since January 1st, we're at 2.02. .02. That's not going to cut it. We're about two inches below average. Just uh, compounding last year's drought. Uh, we're starting this year doing a little bit better, but still on a dry note. Uh, as we look at the rainfall totals from last night, we're at 0.16 here in San Antonio. Bernie, 0.33, New Braunfels, 0.33. Uh, Seguin, about 0.28. Over there at Heritage Middle School, one of the better totals that I saw, 0.7. Converse, uh, you know, we picked up about seven tenths of an inch. These aren't huge numbers, but it was great to, uh, to see some of that rain. Uh, over the last couple of days and hopefully we'll get more systems coming through that will give us uh, some more downpours as we get into spring. Check out this. This was a greenhouse. A Yvonne sent this in. Used to be a greenhouse, I should say. Uh, you can see what the winds did there. And these kind of buildings can get picked up by these winds pretty easily. And when you had gusts 50, 55 miles per hour here in town, maybe a little bit stronger with some of the storms, that is the end result. So, so many damage pictures coming in when it comes to the wind. Uh, we appreciate you, uh, appreciate you sharing those with us. Uh, speaking of the wind, it is starting to die down. We're seeing gusts around 25 miles per hour there in Bernie, seeing some gusts 20, 25 around the area. But in general, these winds are really starting to subside and give it a couple more hours. And these winds will really lighten up uh, significantly. And we'll be done with that. Uh, thankfully, here's the system that caused all the problems yesterday. Pretty dynamic system when you consider everything that we dealt with. The uh, very strong winds, the hail, there were tornadoes in northeast Texas. This is a true spring-like system. And it is moving out to the northeast now and producing some severe weather there. Notice there's also snow on the northern edge of this. So Chicago getting a few flakes this morning and maybe Detroit. Uh, Cincinnati seeing rain, but it's south of that where you have the severe weather, and that's where they're probably going to get some more hail tornado reports today. Nashville, Huntsville, those are places that are in the line of fire. We're in the wake of this system. We've got sinking air now behind us, and that makes for beautiful blue skies. Here's a look at our forecast. 70 by noontime, 72 at 1 o'clock. And look at the winds by, say, 3, 4 o'clock. We're talking northwesterly winds only in the range of 5 to 10 miles per hour. 77 at 4 o'clock by 5 p.m., 76. And then we fall off into the 60s pretty quickly this evening. 67 at 8 o'clock, 63 at 9 p.m. Forecast temperatures around the area, 79 Pleasanton, 77 Floresville, 75 in Seguin. Beautiful, beautiful day. Tonight, because we have the clear skies and the dry air, temperatures are going to get pretty chilly. 47 by tomorrow morning here in town. So when you wake up on Saturday morning, eh, maybe jacket weather for at least a couple of hours before we get those numbers back up into the 80s by the afternoon. And speaking of humidity, very, very dry today and tomorrow. So uh, again, it, it'll feel nice with regards to humidity. It's not until Sunday that it starts to increase a little bit. And then I think in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is when we'll start to feel it again. It'll start to feel a little bit more sticky. 81 on your Saturday. We'll go 82 Sunday. There could be a little bit of morning fog on Sunday. We'll see a lot more of that Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, uh, just kind of getting into that morning cloud, afternoon sun regime until Wednesday. And it looks like we'll get a front late in the day. And that will bring down temperatures. Still some questions as to how cold it may get behind this front, but could be a little chilly by the end of next week. Yeah, that's a big change there to 60 degrees. Yeah, which, you know, might be nice for a little bit. Yes, I think so. Thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. 949, 63 degrees. Wanted to say happy birthday to our teammate, Tiffany Huerta, is celebrating a birthday today. Happy birthday, happy Tiffany. Happy birthday. We, yes, we hope you enjoy a little bit of time off. Next in gaming news, a look at a game set in the Star Wars Galaxy for PlayStation's new virtual reality system. First order on Batuu. Surely we can count on you now.
the Force is strong with this one, or at least it might feel like you are using the Force when playing Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge Enhanced Edition. The game is part of the slate of launch titles for Sony's new PlayStation VR 2 system. With PlayStation VR 2, we're able to take these new technologies, like the way you can rumble the headset and what we can do with the graphics. We can turn on all these dynamic lights and stuff. And so as you're going through that experience, you get to hit a lot of very core Star Wars fantasies. Beyond the galaxy far, far away, the PlayStation VR 2 puts players in the driver's seat of supercars or exploring the post-apocalyptic world of Horizon Call of the Mountain. I think the, the real strength uh, of the PSVR 2 is the, the new technology that, that isn't available elsewhere. Um, you've had to traditionally make a lot of considerations for, for what is possible within VR and, and the PSVR 2 really kind of turned that on its head. It will definitely cost more to play these games. You will need both a PlayStation 5 console in addition to the VR2 unit, which itself is priced at $549. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Okay, check this out. A unique chandelier bought for just $300 at a London antique store was sold at auction for more than three and a half million dollars. Wow, the bronze light fixture was created by a Swiss sculptor in the 1900s. So it's 53 inches tall and 60 inches wide. A British painter, John Craxton, bought the chandelier from an antique store back in 1960 and hung it in his London home. Now, Craxton died in 2009 and the chandelier was eventually put up for sale by his estate. Now, in 2018, a different chandelier made by the same artist sold for more than nine million dollars. Wow. wow. <laughs> Let's look out there with Transguide. This is the area of the accident that we were looking at earlier. This is off of Highway 90 at Zara Zamora. Looks like there's still uh, activity there off to the shoulder of the road after the accident. Oh, dri driving off right now. And I feel like a lot of people are taking today off. I don't know why, but I feel like a lot of people are... <laughs> now you tell us. I know, right? We've been here eight hours. <laughs> this is a... Maybe you're looking at the newsroom list. <laughs> well, that too. Uh, I feel like today is one of those days. Uh, after the storms last night, we got the blue skies. It's a beautiful day to be outside. It, it'll be a great weekend too. 81 Saturday, 82 Sunday. We'll get some fog early on Sunday and then... Uh, some clouds Monday and Tuesday as humidity returns. Front comes back late next week. All right. Well, a lot of people will be cleaning up as well. Uh, our uh, yeah, basketball big. post. I forgot about that. We put away all the little plants, all the stuff that we, you know, the trash cans sure. and everything. We forgot about the basketball post. Oh, and then now it's on its side, right? Well, yeah. You would think that would be uh, maybe heavy enough to hold. But well, not. we just kind of forgot. Yeah, now <laughs> it was just wins. standing there. Yeah. So a lot yeah. of people doing that today. Some time to pick up the pieces this weekend for mm -hmm. sure. Right. Yeah. Well, we hope you all have a good weekend. Thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. Again, happy birthday. If you've got a birthday this weekend, our crews will see you back here for the news at noon. Don't forget about KSAT News Now coming up in just about an hour online.